Super Rugby Trans Tasman, Saturday games, three of them. The biggest story of this weekend, Saturday, will be that there's an Aussie team getting the victory over a Kiwi team. We had to wait a couple of rounds for it, but it has happened. Um, we'll get to that one last, but uh, we'll talk about the Waratahs Crusaders, Blues Brumbies, and then the Reds and um, the Chiefs. And yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on, uh, on the three games. Now, the first one... The Waratahs and the Crusaders. It looked pretty windy out on the beach at Wollongong. How cool is that that the ocean's just just past the back of the stands? That's uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, high scoring game, fifty four points to twenty eight. That's a lot of tries. Um, the Waratahs have once again proven that they're they're pretty good at scoring points. Like to put twenty eight points on the Crusaders is a feat that my Blues don't do every time they play them. But then they go ahead and once again concede, you know, half a hundred. Uh, you're still not going to win many games conceding 60, 50, 40 points week after week. So, um, yeah, it's a bit concerning. Tries for the Crusaders, Drummond, Taylor, Reese, McLeod in the first half. Immediately in the second half, Barrett. Uh, Fangonuku Hall and Jordan. I actually missed all the ones from Barrett's try onwards. I've seen the highlights since, but I went to the Blues game, which meant leaving home. Uh, so I was listening to it on the radio. But yeah, uh, it was good, I guess, like in terms of the game. When uh, Maddox and Reese, not Reese, uh, Parise got their two tries to at least make it like a um, a 10 point ball game. Because remember, the Waratahs initially opted for penalties, which is um, a couple of the Aussie sides have done that actually. And the Blues in their game opted for, for three at one point early. But uh, yeah, trying to build the, the scoreboard pressure. Remember, the Force did that in their game against the Hurricanes. They took a six point lead. Um, the Tars, you know, they kicked a few penalties to at least keep the scoreboard ticking over. But um, yeah, at one point, it was a 10 point game uh, just before the hour mark. But then. Pretty much as soon as the Tars scored, the the Crusaders seemed to run away with the game. Fine, going to Hall and Jordan just really took the took the scoreboard away from them. But um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure if you're a Crusaders fan, are you satisfied with that performance? Probably not entirely, given that what they did to the Reds last week was maybe a bit more I don't know, a bit more sharp, a bit more precise. But as I said, the Waratahs have proved week after week after week they can score points. It's just they, they, they ship a lot as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, position and territory edged it to the Crusaders, 56 and 51 respectively. Tackling percentage, both sides were in the low 80s, which kind of makes sense in a game where there is that many points on the board. Uh, Parise has 10 defenders beaten. He continues to be a really hard guy uh, to bring down. Scott Barrett on his return makes 16 out of 18 tackles, so that's a good shift from him. Uh, bonus point win for the Crusaders. They're just keeping on, trucking on. And the fact that they got a bonus point win against the Reds in the scheme of things may look pretty pretty good for them. Uh, the Waratahs are still building. Um, I think they're getting better. I do think they're getting better. They've got a really young side. And I, I do think the more these guys play together, the better they are going to get. I feel like it's going to come right. But maybe I'm just blindly optimistic. I'm not sure. Um, the Crusaders did get a, a few yellow cards towards the end of the game, which may be the discipline. Uh, penalties conceded was 13-9. The Crusaders conceding a few more, so that's always an area which tends to be higher with them, but they always get the win, so it doesn't seem to make a difference. Uh, the Waratahs are away to the Highlanders next week, and the Crusaders are back home uh, to play the Force. So, yeah, that one, I guess, kind of went maybe as expected, but I still think the Crusaders will be a little bit disappointed. Uh, Waratahs will obviously be disappointed to concede 50, but... They scored almost 30. Uh, the next one, the Blues against the Brumbies. Like I said, I went to this game. Um, also a bit of a game of, uh, of give two halves because it was close. It was close in the first half. Um, yeah, the Blues went in front. They initially opted for a, for a three-pointer, which in the scheme of this competition seemed bizarre. Obviously, you have to get the win, but at this point, have, with no New Zealand teams having lost and the Blues being at home and seeing what happened to the Brumbies last week, I would have thought the Blues surely need to go for a bonus point win. Started with a penalty shot. It was just wide. Um, Zahn Sullivan had the distance from halfway, but um, 
they did shift gears to you know to sh to go for tries kind of pretty much straight after that. Um, Eklund got one for the Blues on 16, but McInerney got the next one for the Brumbies, and the Brumbies were actually in front, which was a wee bit a wee bit concerning for us Blues fans. Um, but Christie probably got the try of the match. That one he he beat. I don't know. I think in the game he has seven defenders beaten. It must have been pretty much all of them uh, in that run of his. And I think that try kind of shifted the momentum. And to be fair, the second half, at least from, from my seat, um, it seemed like the Blues were kind of cruising. They didn't look to be under a heap of threat. But that being said, uh, credit to their defense. Like Especially in the first half, they were camped on their own goal line a fair bit. Um, tended to get up and defend pretty well. So um, that's an aspect of their game which is pretty pleasing. Um, yeah, tries to Eklund, Christie, like I mentioned, Heem, Lamb, and uh, Fayane get them in the second half. So they secured the bonus point, got the one extra try, just as a bit of a buffer in case the Brumbies had scored late. They still would have got a bonus point. So it's a bonus point win for the Blues. The crowd was pretty average, man. I'll tell you, there was not a lot of atmosphere at the game. Sad but true. It was a uh, Saturday night, quarter past seven. I mean, like I mentioned, I got free tickets from my missus' work, and then Sky called me to offer me free tickets as well. So it's like they were giving away tickets to this one, literally. And um, we still didn't get the greatest in attendance, which is unfortunate um, when the Blues are on a pretty decent winning run. But yeah, um, anyway, the, the stats finish... 55 45 position 59 41 territory so the blues you know pretty comfortable there their line out was a bit shaky in the first half but kind of came right in the second it was at 50 percent in the first half finishes 12 from 14 so it was two from four in the first half second half it really shored up tackling percentage blues at a very respectable 89 percent 89 out of 100 tackles brumbies were at 78 which is um yeah, which kind of speaks to the scoreline. Um, penalties conceded 14 to 10. Remember, the, the Brumbies had a yellow card towards the end of the game as well, which didn't help. But as I said, 34 minutes, it was 8-7 to the Brumbies. So it was certainly looking like it could be a proper close a close battle, but the second half just really pulled away. Um, yeah, quiet. It was pretty quiet at the game. I did see Ian Foster. I was two meters away from Ian Foster. He was having some hot chips. Talking to, to Grant Fox, and I'm assuming their wives with them, the four of them. Just chilling out, having some hot chips at halftime. I didn't go up and speak to them. If I had, I probably would have called him Steve, because I always I always call him Steve in these videos. I'm surprised I got his name right for this one. But um, yeah, good win for the Blues, man. Um, the Brumbies have been you know, a bit Jekyll and Hyde, really close against the Crusaders, and then... Um, and then they kind of got well beaten last week. So I think that's a credit to the Blues that they, they managed to get that done. The Brumbies will be looking back at this one and saying, why couldn't they put in a better shift like they did in the first half and carry it on into the second? Uh, just wasn't to be. Um, the Blues are away to the Reds next week, which on paper looks like it could be a pretty tough ask given what happened here. Uh, the Brumbies are home to the Hurricanes. and That's their first home game. Remember, they've been on a three-week away run here in New Zealand. So they'll be doing... Uh, well, they'll be they're pretty chuffed to, to get back home, I would imagine, at this point. The last one, the Reds and the Chiefs. What a bonkers game this one was, man. Absolutely, absolutely bonkers. A lot of tries. Red card, yellow card, penalty try. It was, it was all over the shop. But I guess most importantly for the competition, it's a win for an Aussie team, which is, I think, a bit of a big thing. The fact that there was a comeback from the Chiefs when it was 15 on 15 and there was a red card in which the, the Reds absolutely capitalized on um, will have. I'm certain if you went over to the Chiefs Facebook page right now, there will be people saying that the ref was the 16th man on the Chiefs, Chiefs team, Reds team. Um, interestingly, this week they actually, on the coverage here, they, they left the stand halftime show in and DMAX red card was pretty criticized by the likes of Michael Checker and Will Guinea basically saying that it kind of ruined the spectacle and you want to see DMAC plan but I mean I'm with Nick McArdle and that those ones are red cards all day long based on the current frameworks whether you agree it's right or wrong as soon as I saw it there was one particular angle it looked like a red card to me but anyway um there's tries in this one the first half 
the, the Reds are on fire. And as I mentioned, when they had the extra man, they um, they were just going, going gangbusters. They were hitting the ball at pace, showing real confidence. Um, yeah, you could just see their runners just really wanted to get their hands on the ball and take it to the Chiefs' defense. So it was... It was quite um, quite impressive to see, but maybe they burned themselves out because the second half, the Chiefs really came back. Uh, penalty try on 16. That was the yellow card to Tia Tia. I remember, he went for an intercept, which is, a, a, again, like um, Drew Mitchell mentioned at the halftime, it's a rule or a law that I'm not that fond of, but it's a hard one to guess where someone's intent is because if you don't get an intercept right, essentially, you're, you're liable for a yellow card, and he got one. Uh, Henry got a double. Isaac Henry, good, good starting debut for him to get two tries uh Vuni Vailo got one as well Fotowaka all in the first half they just scored the one in the second half which proved to be pretty crucial through Dalgunu and uh the Chiefs got them all in the second half Soakula, Vai, O'Neal, Sullivan and Rowe but you look at the timings on these tries like what a comeback 64, 68, 76, 78 Brad Weber said in the post match like give them a few more minutes I think the Chiefs would have won this one so whilst the Reds will be pretty chuffed like, what was the lead at one point? It was a stupidly, like, 33-3. 33-3. And uh, it finishes 40 points to 34. There's, yeah, there's a bit of a, um, a string attached to that feel-good feeling, eh? Um, and they scored, like, what was it, three tries when it was f- uh, the red card period? And at least one of them when it was 15 on 13. So credit to the Reds for capitalizing but it does break the question if it was 15 on 15 the whole game how would it have gone kind of a pointless question because that's not what happened but people will still ponder um the position finishes 53 47 territory 58 42 so the Reds kind of dominate and if Chiefs fans are kind of angry at the ref stuff I mean there's some stuff which is pretty costly here turnovers conceded 17 to 8 that's a Chiefs stat which has got the bigger number there and it was half time it was uh, three turnovers conceded for the Reds and 11 turnovers conceded for the Chiefs. And the Chiefs only had 30% of the ball. How do you concede it like four times as much with only 30% of the ball? Just, um, yeah, costly stuff. Costly, costly. Clean breaks 10 to 5 to the Reds. Run meters 531 to 597. So that was actually kind of tight. And the Reds' tackling percentage really plummeted um, in this game. It was down at 79% by full time. So not the best shift defensively. And uh, yeah, they let in quite a few tries at the end. Paisami finishes with six defenders beaten. Vunivalu certainly proved to be good in the air. Uh, the Reds will credit their scrum early on, I thought. It was um, it was stepping up pretty well against the Chiefs scrum, which demolished the Brumbies a week before. So um, yeah, interesting. Interesting one. Uh, Brown finishes with 14 out of 15 tackles, so good on him. But yeah, DMAC will be suspended, so... We'll have to see see what happens for the Chiefs. But the fact that they've dropped a game, unless in the final two rounds at least three other New Zealand teams drop games, that's curtains for the, the Chiefs making the final. But anyway, we'll see. The Blues have got to play the Chiefs, not the, Chiefs the, um, the Reds next week, so it's not going to be easy based on what we saw here. Uh, the Reds host the Blues, like I said, and the Chiefs host the Rebels back here in New Zealand. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that game goes ahead with the travel all being well and good. But anyway, uh, it is 10 past 12. So that makes it already Sunday for me. So I better go to bed. Yes. Good games. Like I mentioned, a bit of a pity about the atmosphere. There wasn't that much going on, but I did hear Fozzie say, go the Blues to Grant Fox. I know he's a Chiefs man, but maybe he's a uh, secret Blues man at heart. Anyway, you guys take care of yourselves. Let me know your thoughts on the games. Very high scoring. Um, bit of tension in that one for sure. Maybe not so much in these ones, but still a bit of entertainment value. Um, and yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.